Hey everybody, Ashton here with Gen Sense with a fragrance review. So today we're going to be taking a look at Manhattan Leather from The Gate. And I just want to let you know right off the top that this was sent to me for review. And this is actually going to be kind of a fun one, so make sure to stick around. I have some of the coolest reviews that I have ever read for any fragrance in regards to this one. And we'll get into that in a little bit, so stick with me. All right, let's go ahead and check out the presentation really quickly. You have the name of the fragrance here, concentration and size here on the front. It does look a bit like a Tom Ford mixed with an homage, something like that. You just lift up like so. You have the name of the house at the top there with their logo. And that design that you see on the box runs all the way around, so it looks pretty nice. The bottle sits down inside like so, which is also good because, as has been pointed out before, when you buy a Mage is new and you lift the, the box up, the bottle can fall out if you're not careful. On the bottom you have the ingredients made in UAE. And then the bottle here is fairly simplistic. You have the name of the house and fragrance and concentration on this little uh, sticker which is stuck on the front of the bottle. You can see through this fairly easily. You can actually see through the top there to see the juice. You can pick it up by the cap if you want to, but it doesn't click into place, so I wouldn't do it. Atomizer sprays out very well. That's the presentation for the Gate Manhattan Leather. So I'll give my quick run through on this. This opens very harshly. It smells like basil and sage just smashed between your fingers. It's semi-acrid and there are non-sweet resins in there. So this is definitely not something that's going to be your typical people pleaser fragrance and as far as leathers go this one is going to be much further on that animalic side of things. After 15 to 20 minutes that harshness starts to fade a bit and you get this semi damp leather. It smells kind of like turned earth to an extent. It's kind of vegetal. So yeah, it's like a damp leather. Leather that's been left out, been rained on for four or five days and hasn't been moved. Something like that. There's also a slight bit of violet in here, which is what gives Fahrenheit its petrol slash gasoline kind of smell. So you get a little bit of that as well. And then there's also incense in here giving kind of a smoky accord. So there's a whole lot of things in here that give a very masculine vibe. As the fragrance continues on, that leather starts to smell a little dirty as well as being damp because there's oud in this fragrance, which gives almost a little bit of a fecal feel. So it's animalic. It's like damp animalic leather. Some woody notes come into the fragrance and they kind of fade away. The violet also fades even more into the background and that vegetal smell I was telling you about, the kind of turned earth smell, that wanes. It comes, it goes. There are times that you'll catch a whiff of it and then you won't be able to pick it up for a little bit. But the main thing that stays constant here is that kind of damp dirty leather feel with the incense. That's pretty much the constant from 15 to 20 minutes in through the dry down. So yeah, this is obviously a very masculine fragrance. This is nowhere remotely near unisexual. And when you spray this on, you have to have a lot of confidence to pull this off. This isn't something you can spray on and just wear casually and not think about it. It's something you need to be aware of and you need to carry yourself uh, with confidence when you wear it. Definitely do not wear this to the office, at least in my opinion, and only wear this in cooler or cold weather because if it's hot out and you spray this on any decent amount, you will potentially choke out everyone around you. Performance is very good. We're talking 10 plus hours. Uh, the projection also very good. It projects out a few feet easily, so be careful on the trigger when you spray this on. And I've kind of alluded to this, but I just want to say it again. This is more for adventurous people. And if you wear it, you have to wear it with confidence. So this is not a designer kind of leather fragrance that comes across really pleasant. Um, it's kind of harsh. So just be aware of that. But now the best part, if you go to their website, which I will link in the description, there are some fan freaking tastic reviews on there. They are all five star reviews. So I'm assuming that they may be left uh, by the company themselves, but these reviews are amazing. So we're going to go ahead and read some of these in lieu of doing any more of my review because it can't compare to this. All right, let's go ahead and do this. 
Upon opening, this is one powerful brew. Basil and sage and resins are battling it out to be the boldest and most abrasive. I can smell some leather, but it is either still being cured in strong chemicals or possibly even still on the cow, as it does have a faint farm manure edge to it. After a while, it changes to smell more like a campfire smoke, the smoke from green damp wood, possibly pine. So powerful is this scent that my mind tricked itself into hearing the crackle of the fire and feeling the ambient heat rise in my face. The leather disappeared in this stage. Thankfully, it deepens and softens relatively quickly. Joining it later was a Swedish incense and more resin. The leather does come back, but it is not a refined ladylike handbag kind of leather. It is more ripped off beast kind of raw, dirty leather possibly smeared with the faintest trace of manure. It is actually quite scintillating. Later in the dry down, a hint of marijuana creeps in. Overall, I found it to be quite an interesting and enjoyable olfactory adventure. I don't know if I would or even could wear it. It is very acrid and smoky. Perhaps if I apply a small dash to the wrists and waited a half hour before leaving the house. These get better as they go. Bitter, fascinating, mournful, but also quite scandalously sexy. This is a brutal fragrance. It isn't there to entertain an audience or to convince them of your virtues. It is an armor painted with an emblem of ruthlessness. Well-mannered, but having done away with airs and graces. This smells of the sensation of briefly returning somewhere that has been resigned to the past. Places that you have outgrown and moved forward from. There is a melancholy about it, but also an assurance that you've ascended in the right direction towards your destiny. It's very, very grown up. Not old hat or old lady or old man, and certainly not for children. This is a wonderful contemplative fragrance that does not smell like zombies or rotting flesh. I can see why people think of gasoline and of turned earth, but I think this is far more sophisticated than that. This would make a wonderful gift to yourself to celebrate a milestone in your life, but not something that should be blind bought for others unless they are 28 plus and like brutal, leathery, bitter green, fragrant chain mail. This one's good. I love Oud. This is oodles and oodles of Oud. It is savage. This is not fragrance or perfume. This stuff is like having sex in hell with Satan and all his minions. It is burning, burnt smoke oud. It lasts forever and projects out the windows and knocks down the walls. And the last review is a bit of a story. <clears throat> a tiny house far in the woods. Five men live in this hut. They are brothers by blood. They have no friends or acquaintances. They kill wild animals, marinate them with herbs, store them for days before roasting them over a fire pit and eating it. Since certain animals are hard to hunt, they keep them alive by hanging them upside down till it is time to be killed. <laughs> Herbs of various kinds can be found in their hut, all bottled and stored in a wooden cabinet. The cabinet itself is made of precious woods emanating an aroma in the kitchen area. The brothers are feared by many as stories went around that they are merciless beings. One day a wild fire caught their wooden hut and burnt everything to ashes. The brother, the wooden furniture, animals, their furs, and most of all, the precious herbs. These five men did not go to heaven or hell. They remained roaming the woods. Demonic spirits they are. None could get close to where the hut once stood erect, for evil is lurking. The aroma from the burnt hut fills the air for many months, pungent, overpouring, and choking-like. All this captured into a bottle, strong, powerful, and not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so that was story time with the Gate Manhattan Leather. Uh, it is a very interesting leather. I feel like those reviews told you more than I ever could. And if you are interested in this, they carry it in a bunch of different sizes, 10, 20, 50, 100. Again, I will post the link in the description, so if you're interested, please check them out. They do actually have a bunch of interesting fragrances on there. I've smelled a few of them, um, and they're actually pretty well done. Um, it's better than you might think, so they're definitely worth checking out. And uh, they're also on eBay, I believe, because I saw their um, Aventus clone snowflakes 
on eBay months and months and months before I knew that they had a whole line of fragrances. All right, guys, that's my take on Manhattan Leather by The Gate Fragrance. Honestly, this is one of my favorite reviews that I have ever done. So let me know if you've smelled this one. Let me know what you think about it. Please do check them out. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.